everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Clinton here, your steadfast advocate for health. Telling the truth every day. That's all we do. That's all we have to do. Tell the truth. Get out of the way. Let the truth resonate with people. Let people try what we are suggesting and let the proof of the pudding be in the eating. That's how we do it today. That's how we do it every day. We introduce people to the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition, and we uh, up the ante with our testimony on the effectiveness of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition, and we educate people as to why this approach is an effective approach. By way of education, I'd like to uh, continue uh, my education of the listening audience about uh, kind of more, uh, not more detailed, maybe more detailed, but just I'd like to continue the conversation here about why uh, the holistic approach is better and why we recommend that you fire your MD. It's not because we have an axe to grind. It's because their therapeutics are based on a philosophy which is inconsistent with reality, and that's why they're dangerous and they need to be avoided, except, of course, when you are inside of their wheelhouse, which is, uh, in heaven forbid, you never are, emergency medicine, trauma <clears throat> care, surgery when it's necessary, a handful of infectious diseases. I'm going to read from some excerpts from this today. Lectures on Homeopathic Philosophy by James Tyler Kent. You can see my edition is rather used. I've had this book since, let me see, 1990. This book currently in my possession, 24 years old. Published by North Atlantic Books, Homeopathic Educational Services, Berkeley, California. James Tyler Kent's Lectures on homeopathic philosophy. Now, the founder of, uh, just to kind of lay the the, the uh, scene here, uh, there are a number of different types of holistic medical f- treatment philosophies in the world, right? There's naturopathy, which I'm licensed and regulated in, chiropractic, uh, homeopathy, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, etc. Many different types of holistic medicine, and one of the things that all schools of holistic thought have in common is the fundamental assumption that the human body is endowed with a vital force. The human body is endowed with an unmeasurable spiritual presence, which delivers intelligence and uh, self-regulating properties to the machine of the human body as is evidenced by the fact that when the human body dies, when the spirit leaves the body, the body disintegrates into, uh, you know, the the dust from which it came. Well, you know, why doesn't the body disintegrate while you're alive? Because the vital principle is present inside the body running the show. Now, we talk about all the time here, I talk about all the time here, um, the relationship between the vital force and the symptoms of the body. And I'm trying to impart to my listening audience a somewhat sophisticated understanding of the relationship between the two and what all of this means anyway when it comes to the nature of disease. The founder of homeopathic medicine uh, was a man named uh, Samuel Hahnemann. And Samuel Hahnemann wrote a textbook of homeopathy called the Organon of medicine, kind of setting the rules of the road for the understanding and the practice of homeopathic medicine. Uh, The first uh, little bit I'm going to read here is an excerpt from the very first chapter, uh, the first stanza of Hahnemann's immortal organon of medicine. Hahnemann says, the physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health, to cure as it is termed. The physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health, to cure, as it is termed, end quote. Now, James Tyler Kent, the author of this book, one of the leading homeopaths of the 19th century, uh, goes on to explain what Hahnemann meant. In this one simple sentence, Kent takes 10 or 15 pages to explain what Hahnemann meant. I'm not going to read you all 15 pages, but I want to give you a little taste here of how uh, sophisticated uh, physicians think about the relationship between the human body and disease. 
Kent says, no controversy will arise from a superficial reading of this statement, and until Hahnemann's hidden meaning of the word sick is fully brought to view, the physician of any school will assent. The idea that one person will entertain as to the meaning of the word sick will be different at times from that which another will entertain, so long as it remains a matter of opinion, there will be differences of opinion. Therefore, the homeopath, the holistic physician, must abandon the mere expression of opinion. Allopathic medicine rests on individual opinion, and allopathic doctors say that the science of medicine is based on the consensus of opinion. But that is an unworthy and unstable foundation for the science of curing the sick. I agree, couldn't agree more. It will never be possible to establish a rational system of therapeutics until we reason from facts as they are and not as they sometimes appear to be. Facts as they appear to be are expressed in the opinions of men, but facts as they are are facts and truths from which doctrines are evolved and formulated which will interpret or unlock the kingdoms of nature in the realm of sickness or health. Therefore, beware of the opinion of men in science. Dr. Hahnemann has given us principles which we can study and advance upon. It is law that governs the world and not matters of opinion or hypothesis. We must begin by having a respect for the law. The true homeopath, when he speaks of the sick, knows who it is that's sick, whereas the allopathic MD does not know. The MD thinks that the house which the man lives in, which is being torn down, expresses all there is of sickness. In other words, that the tissue changes, which are only the result of the disease, are all that there is of the sick man. The homeopath, on the other hand, observes wonderful changes resulting from his potentized medicines and being compelled to reflect, he sees that crude drugs cannot heal the sick and that the changes that they do affect are not real but only apparent. Modern physiology has no vital doctrine in its teaching and therefore no basis to work upon. The doctrine of the vital force is not admitted by the teachers of physiology, and therefore the homeopath sees that true physiology is not yet taught. For without the vital force, without the internal as well as the external, there can be no cause and no relation between cause and effect. As an example of this, can't uh, speaks about, uh, Kent goes on to say, let's, for instance, take the nervous child. The child has wild dreams, twitching, restless sleep, nervous excitement, hysterical manifestations. But if we examine all of the organs of the body of the nervous child, we will find nothing the matter with them. The sickness, however, which is present, if allowed to go uncured, will in 20 or 30 years result eventually in tissue change. The organs will become affected, and then it will be said that the body is diseased. But, in point of fact, the individual has been sick from the beginning. It is a question whether we will start out and consider the results of disease or begin at the beginning with the causes. If we have material ideas of disease, we will have material ideas of the means of cure. If we believe an organ is sick and alone constitutes the disease, we must feel that if we could remove the organ, we would cure the patient. A man has a necrotic condition in the hand. Uh, then if we believe only that the hand is sick, we would think we have cured the patient by removing his hand. Let's say the hand is cancerous. According to this idea, it is cancerous in itself and from itself. And seeing this, he would uh, 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 later die from the cancer of his hand. We would conscientiously remove the hand and so cure the patient. For an eruption on the skin, we would use a local means to stimulate the function of the skin and make it heal, and believing the eruption had no cause behind it, we would conscientiously think that we had cured the patient. But this is the reductio ad absurdum, for nothing exists without a cause. The organs are not the man. The man is prior to the organs. From first to last is the order of sickness, as well as the order of cure. 
For man is to his organs, and not from organs to the man. Get it? This is holistic philosophy in a nutshell. This is why you need to fire your MD, because your MD actually believes that the ulcer in the stomach is the disease, that the diseased joint is the disease, the arthritic joint is the disease, that the tumor is the disease, that the high blood pressure is the disease, that <clears throat> the stiffness in the ligaments, tendons, and joints is the disease, that the inability to concentrate is the disease, that the plaque formation in the artery is the disease, that the stone formation in the kidney or the gallbladder is the disease, but these things are not the disease, they are the results of the disease. And because your medical doctor does not understand that your medical doctor, your MD is unsuited to bring about a cure, they can not do it. This is why, if you are to be, uh, you know, responsible, if you're to walk down the road of your life in a responsible fashion, I mean, taking care of your body the way that, uh, you know, you should, the way that you know you should, then uh, from first to last, you must fire your MD because your MD is completely clueless as to the real nature of your illness and therefore their therapeutics must fail. And oh, guess what? The leading cause of death in the United States, MD-directed medicine. The leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, MD-directed medicine. Why? Because the most expensive medicine is the one that does not work. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome aboard. You are listening to Fire Your MD Now. Check out the live stream, the Dr. Glidden show.tv back after these messages I look forward to that well, welcome back ladies and gentlemen hey hey Dr. Peter Glidden uh, talking to 55 people in the chat room now there are 55 people watching the live video stream it's a free video stream by the way and when you are in the live video stream uh, you are automatically entered into a chat room, and there's 55 people from all over the world chatting amongst themselves, uh, telling everybody that Dr. Glidden is, in fact, having a bad hair day. But what are you going to do? That's showbiz. Let's get right to the phones now. Daniel from Arizona is up first. Hey, Daniel, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Hi. Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, thir turned 32 in all my life, and I never had receding hairline until uh, my 31st year. Uh, when, yeah, most of the time I would be fasting a lot and things like that, and then my 31st year I would just start eating like easy food that I could just get from the gas station or whatever. And that was the same exact time that my, if my hairline started receding. So I thought, well, are these two things related? Well, you know, entirely possible, right? I mean, you sound like a smart guy. And often, right where there's smoke, there's fire. From our point of view, there's a couple of things that cause receding hairlines. One, of course, is the genetic component. So, you know, you want to look to see whether or not your uh, father or your grandfather had a receding hairline and at what age it started in them, if that's possible. But that's not always, uh, you know, uh, a dyed-in-the-wool kind of, you know, death sentence. It's not always. Right. So... From our point of view, notwithstanding the, the genetic potential here, the reason that the body loses hair, there's two reasons that that, that, that happens. Number one is an underactive thyroid. Uh, number two is chronic nutrient loss because when your body you know, loses a lot of nutrients, it, it will start to steal nutrients from non-essential tissue in order to keep essential tissue alive. So when your body starts to become extremely nutritionally deficient, which happens with age, if you're not supplementing appropriately, and nobody in this country does, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your body will start to rob nutrients from the hair to keep your liver and your heart and your kidneys happy. That's mm -hmm. probably what's happening here to you. However, you may want to go on the Internet and do a Google search for the symptoms of an underactive thyroid symptoms of an underactive thyroid and see if you are suffering from three or more symptoms of an underactive thyroid if you are then you should go and have some blood work done 
in order to assess the functionality of your thyroid and here's the blood work that I would recommend you get. You can even order this blood work yourself and completely avoid the MD into the bargain. You need to look at free T3, that's F-R-E-E, free, like free willy, free T like Thomas, three, and free T4, free T3 and free T4. Okay. Don't bother with TSH, don't bother with anything else. Look at free T3 and free T4. Look to see whether you have any of the other signs and symptoms of an underactive thyroid. It doesn't sound like it to me. It sounds to me like it's just, you know, nutrient deficiencies that have caught up with you that were accelerated by your crappy diet, right? Because we we talk about two things here, Daniel. We have to, you know, not put diesel fuel in an unleaded engine, right? You don't want to put the wrong food into the human body or you're going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And number two, your body has to be nutrified every day with the right stuff. And nobody is nutrified every day with the right stuff. Some people eat good and some people don't. May, now, may I say something very quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Um. Yeah, my nails were terrible and very terrible. They had, they was like, they were not growing very well at all. Uh, and then uh, as soon as when I saw my hairline started to recede very slightly, I was like, okay, I got to start eating healthy. So I started eating greens every day. Um, but I started with like fifty fifty. I would eat half, you know, regular food like even bread and things like that, and like greens. And then I then recently I got a juicer. Yeah, my my nails grew back really nicely and everything. Um, but like my hairline did not stop receding, even though I've been, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting the iodine supplement from Infowars X2, yeah, because um, that's for thyroid, uh, and try to balance that with selenium from Brazil nuts. If that's just, you know, if oh, that's a mistake. Uh, all mistake. right, so so I like how you think, but there's a couple things that you're mistaken about. Okay, okay. all right, and I'm I'm glad that you called. Number one, grains are some of the worst foods anybody can eat, and it, our recommend. Yeah, our recommendation is you avoid wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Avoid. Yeah, I saw your program about that. You need to stop that. You need to stop okay. eating those grains immediately. If you want to eat other grains, I'm okay with that. Number one. Number two, you're right, you need selenium. But the Brazil nut only gets selenium from the soil that the tree grew in. If there was no selenium in the soil that the Brazil tree was growing in, there's no selenium in the Brazil nut. Much smarter, much smarter to get your selenium from a nutritional supplement. And, you know, my opinion, longevity all the way. It's important things to understand here, right? There are some misconceptions that abound in the world, and this is one of the reasons why I'm here One of the reasons why Dr. Wallach is here, uh, the caller previously was right that if you're taking extra iodine in any form, you need to balance that with selenium because iodine will remove selenium from your body and selenium will remove iodine from your body, neither of which are good. These things have to be in the body and, you know, the right amounts and the right ratios, otherwise you're going to hurt yourself. But it is a fool's errand to believe that you can secure all of your mineral needs just from eating food. Now, you know, if this was the Garden of Eden and the soil had all 60 essential minerals in it, in every inch of every of, of the soil, right, then every Brazil nut tree would have a lot of selenium in the Brazil nuts because Brazil nuts concentrate selenium. But the Brazil nut tree cannot make selenium. Your cow's body cannot make selenium calcium the only way that calcium gets into the food chain is if it's in the soil that's in the food chain right so if there's no selenium in the soil that the brazil nut tree is growing in there ain't no selenium in the brazil nut if there's no calcium in the grass the cow's eating there ain't no calcium in the cow's milk and so forth and so on but since your medical doctor has no appreciation for medical nutrition and since the internet is filled with foolish ideas nobody gets it right except Dr. Wallach, right? Look, as God is my witness, Wallach's done the heavy lifting, $25 million of research, 26,000 autopsies. That's a lot of work. My advice, if you're trying to figure out somewhat complicated nutritional situations, stop. Wallach's already done it. For goodness sake, lean on the master. Kneel at the feet of the master. As far as I'm concerned, if Dr. Wallach says jump, your reply should be, how high, Doc? I'm ready to go. So 
If you think you can get all the selenium your body needs from eating Brazil nuts, you're wrong. If you think you can get all the calcium you need from drinking milk, you're wrong. Unless you're supplementing with a good, solid state, saturated mineral supplement, it's only a matter of time until your body becomes deficient and then things start to break and then you are out of luck. Let's go to New York and talk to Chris, see what's up. Hey, Chris, thanks for the phone call. It's your turn here on Fire Your MD Now. Hi, how you doing? Well, I'm good, but God willing, I'll get better. What's going on in New York? Um, I, I have a question. Uh, I'm 130 pounds, and I was wondering, I'm six feet, and I was wondering, I want to take the products, but I don't want to maintain my weight. I want to know if there's anything wrong with me or because i've been healthy all my life my doctor said there's nothing wrong with me <laughs> well do you have any chronic and persistent symptoms no 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 they they told me i might have celiac one time because of my <laughs> the way my fingernails and but cold. as far as you're concerned your mood's good your energy's good yeah, your s sleep's yeah. good your blood yeah. pressure's good everything's hunky dory right yes yeah, yeah. So look, the only th and you're afraid of gaining weight on a medical nutrition program? I want to gain weight. Oh, well that's easy. Okay. So that's all right. I misunderstood you. So, yeah, you know, 6 foot 130 pounds, you're like a bean pole, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so what we do here is we we fall back on the fundamental belief that the human body knows how to fix itself, the human body knows what an optimal weight is, and the human body wants to achieve it, right? So, however, you know, we need to do things to the human body to support it. You know, we need to take showers every day, we need to drink purified water and put on clothes when we go outside. Well, we also need to give the body the raw materials that the body needs to function properly because those raw materials are not all present in the food. They're just not there. They're not there. So, you have to give your body the right raw materials appropriate for its body weight. And then, <clears throat> really, just what I would do here for the first uh, two months, I wouldn't worry about weight gain specifically. What I would do is I would educate myself about what the 10 bad foods are, uh, what food items contain the 10 bad foods, I would eliminate wholeheartedly the 10 bad foods from your lifestyle and your diet. Eliminate the 10 bad foods. Uh, and number two, every day, fill your nutritional tank up with the appropriate stuff. Now, the appropriate stuff for you at 130 pounds is easy. It's simply one healthy body start pack 2.0, one healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form, uh, and three bottles of ultimate selenium, three bottles of ultimate selenium, and one bottle of plant-derived minerals, right? So that's one bottle of plant-derived minerals, three bottles of ultimate selenium, and one healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form, and I really wish they'd shorten that name. That's what you need to take every month. Uh, for three months in order to kind of get a sense of give your body the stuff that it needs. Now, if you do that program, plus eliminate the 10 bad foods for two months, that's eight weeks in a row, you just look to see where you're at with your body weight. Because often what will happen is, remember, your body knows how to self-regulate, but you need to help it. So when you stop eating food that's hurting the body and you support the internal workings of the body with the right nutrition, your appetite will kick in if your body needs to gain weight. And your appetite will reduce if your body needs to lose weight. So I wouldn't pay any attention to calories for the first eight weeks. I would just give your body its due, remove you know harmful foods from the mix and see what happens. Now, after week eight, if you are still unhappy with your body weight, then it is a simple manner of counting your calories and increasing your calorie intake every day. Weight gain calorie consumption is 2,000 calories a day. 2,000 calories a day, you will gain weight. 2,000 calories a day. As Remember, though, they have to be... I'm, 30, I'm 37. Well, I don't care. Yeah, oh, I, I, it I'm doesn't matter. Saying, okay, okay. Yeah, I know. So this is ir ir irregardless of your um, age. Weight gain is related mostly to one thing, calorie intake or lack thereof. I mean, look at it this way. 
There was nobody in the death camps of World War II that was overweight, right? I don't care what their pre-existing medical conditions were. I don't care what their age, their race, their sex, their, nothing. And they were all stressed out of their minds, for goodness sake. They're going to die. But they all lost weight. Why? Because they didn't eat. They didn't feed those people. They did not eat, and so they lost weight. So it's calories that are mostly at play with weight gain or weight loss. But you have to give your body its due so that the internal workings of the body can work the way that nature and God intended them to. And then once you've got that dialed in, if you want to lose weight, you restrict calories. And if you want to gain weight, you add calories. And it's that simple, man. It's really, it's really quite simple. But often our experiences, when people do this, um, they don't really even need to try because you'll get hungrier and eat more calories automatically once your body is neutrified, if that's what needs to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah yes. One more question, please. I, yeah. I, I saw a web, your webinar about molds and using selenium yeah. and uh, colloidal silver to get that's rid of them all. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but if you have them all over, what do I do? I rub it all over my face or my chest? Well, no, I wouldn't do that. So that's a that's a different animal, right? So if you have moles all over, that's more of um, I don't know what's the best way to describe that. That's kind of like uh, well, it might be baked into the cake, right? Um, so my recommendation, if you have lots of moles, is pick two of the most prominent ones and do the selenium and the colloidal silver paste on those two and see how it goes and see what happens. And then if you get a positive result from that external application of the colloidal silver and selenium, then you can, you know, just go around your body. But I would only put the paste directly on top of the mole uh, when you're trying to make your skin healthier. You know, I wouldn't like um, put it all over my body, like in a mud bath or, you know, or okay. anything like that. But you want to do an experiment first, you know, pick a couple of the more prominent ones uh, and see what happens, uh, because this is either going to work or it doesn't work. And honestly, um, Chris, I've never seen that therapeutic fail. I, I'm, I'm still waiting to, for someone to tell me they tried it and it didn't work. So I'm kind of excited for you. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll let you know. All right, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate your trust. I appreciate your phone call. Now, you know, go out Thank there and give it a whirl, man. You know, folks, this is it. Um, I talked about this in an interview that I gave this morning uh, for a lecture that I'm lecture series I'm getting ready to do in Portland, Oregon, and Seattle uh, next month. Uh, we're going to hit the hit the streets. Dr. Glidden's hitting the road, and we're going to go to Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. Back to the Pacific Northwest, my old stomping ground, and tell it like it is. But the simple fact of the matter here is that um, the reason that longevity exists, the reason that naturopathic medicine exists in a hostile political climate like we have is because it works. Right? It doesn't matter if you understand biochemistry. It doesn't even matter if you know what a vitamin is or know how to spell vitamin. Right? And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you can go to 100 health lectures this year, and everybody in front of the room is going to tell you there, you know what doesn't stink, and they've got the best stuff, and it's their way or the highway, yada, yada, yada. Well, that's just great. What really matters, however, is results. I'm telling you. In 25 years of clinical experience, in the application of naturopathic therapeutics, Dr. Wallach's methods, Dr. Wallach's therapeutics, produce more consistent, effective, positive physical change than anything else I've seen. So look, you know, proof of the puddings in the eating, give our way a try, our recommendation, 90 for life for 90 days. Clean your diet up. Eliminate the 10 bad foods. Take the appropriate healthy pack for your body weight for three months in a row and let your body tell you for itself whether I'm blowing smoke or telling the truth. Your body will let you know uh, the truth will out, as the fellow said. A couple more minutes here in the first segment. Let's stay in New York and talk to Ben. Hey, Ben, thanks for the call. You are live. Hey, Ben, come on in, Ben. 
Uh, yeah, no problem. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I have just two questions to ask, you know. All right, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, uh, the two questions are dandruff and, uh, like, hamstring and the muscle. My tight and my muscle is always, like, tight. Oh, yeah, so you got tight hamstrings all the time? Yes. Yeah, you have any arthritic problems? Um, I don't think so. Like your knees or your hips or your elbows, or your shoulders, those joints are okay? Yeah, they're okay. You get restless legs at night in bed? No. How about heartburn? Do you get heartburn on or off? No, I don't get heartburn. Okay. How old are you and how much do you weigh? I'm about, uh, I weigh 165. 165? Yeah. Yeah. How tall are you, man? Five, six. Okay. So, number one, you know, you got to give your muscles, ligaments, and tendons nutritional support. And number two, you have to give your skin nutritional support. Number three, you have to stop eating food that's hurting your muscles, ligaments, tendons, and skin. <laughs> so stick around. This is a hard break, Ben. When I come back, I'll dial it in for you. Appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome aboard. This is Fire Your MD Now. Extra vitamin. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health. Check out the live video stream. Join the chat, the Dr. Glidden Show dot TV. Let's go back to New York and talk to Ben. Ben, are you still with me? Yes, I'm still with you. All right. So number one, buddy, uh, you have to stop eating the ten bad foods, and you can get that list for free on my website, drglidden.com. You have to stop doing that right away because those foods hurt your body, and if you continue to eat them, there's no amount of medical nutrition or medical intervention that's going to help you because you're, you know, every time you eat the bad stuff, it's whittling away at your body's health, and it's only a matter of time until something breaks, man. I mean, you wouldn't put diesel fuel into an unleaded engine. The only reason it's funny, man, because, you know, right, I mean, we have trusted the people who make the food to tell us what food to eat, and we've trusted MDs like Dr. Oz, who have no training, no experience with medical nutrition, to tell us what foods to eat because we think that MDs have some secret decoder ring to all things medical. It's nonsense. We've taken the wrong dogs to the hunt. The people that make the food have no idea what food is good and what food isn't, and your MD certainly doesn't. But guess who does? We do the profession that wrote the book on medical nutrition, the nature path. So I would pay attention to what we have to say when it comes to these things. So number one, eliminate the 10 bad foods. Number two, you need muscle, joint, ligament, and skin support. At 165 pounds for three months, the best way to do that, in my opinion, is uh, one healthy <clears throat> body start pack 2.0 liquid. That's a ponderous name one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid right mm -hmm. uh well you would need two of those actually because you're 165 so you need two of those two healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form um one bottle of multi efas one bottle of multi efas and one bottle of uh, cal toddy that's c-a-l like calcium toddy one bottle of cal toddy uh, get those supplements take them every day for three months uh, eliminate the 10 bad foods and i would i would anticipate ben that not only are you going to experience an improvement in your uh, hamstrings and your dandruff but you're also going to experience better mood better energy better sleep better sex drive better digestion better appetite because everything's connected man I mean, right, and when your body runs out of stuff, things start breaking down, but because we don't know any better, we get used to feeling like crap, and we look around and everybody in our world feels like crap, and so we just think it's part of the deal, but it ain't part of the deal. The only reason that people feel like crap and get used to it is because medical mediocrity is on the rise, brought to you by the monopolistic-minded MD. So look, clean your diet up. Give your body the nutrients it needs and, you know, look to see how it affects you across the board, 
not just with you know the dandruff and the, and the hamstring issue, but with everything else, because this is holistic intervention par excellence. Now, get with the person that told you about this radio show, Ben. Get with the person that told you about this radio show and get your products that way, uh, because we represent a gigantic network of independent distributors all around the world, and we like to maintain the integrity of the distribution center. So get with the person who told you about this radio show, who told you about Longevity in the first place, and they will hook you up. And, folks, same goes for you. If you like what we're talking about, then we got so much more. Uh, Longevity has so much more. I have so much more on my website. Please go to drglidden.com. Consider becoming a Dr. Glidden Insider. It's a monthly subscription, 20 bucks a month. You'll have immediate access to over 100 hours of archived health webinars that contain information that can save lives. No kidding. I'm choosing my words carefully. And, you know, if you found us all by your lonesome, by hook or by crook, because we do lots of Internet advertising ourselves, if you found us because of our efforts, then give Team Glidden a call. Give my longevity team a call, 855-347-3696, and we will set you on the path, the correct path to the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. Hour two is coming up. Batten down the hatches. Lad from Houston is up next. I'm Dr. Glidden. Welcome aboard. That's right. You know how we're going to deliver the knockout punch? Silently by attrition. One day the MDs are just going to wake up. MDs in general family practice and specialty services. They're going to wake up and there's going to be no patient scheduled. There's going to be no patient scheduled for the next day or the next day or the next day. And then you're going to see medical doctors on the side of the road with signs that say, we'll do an appendectomy for food. Right? Because, look, the truth will out. The truth will out. It's only a matter of time until enough people in the world experience the wonders of medical nutrition, experience positive health brought about by medical nutrition, and then guess what? There aren't going to be any more patients for the MDs. Because our intention here is to get you so healthy that you do not need to take a prescription medication. And oftentimes that is easier to do than you have been led to believe. Now, am I making claims here? Am I saying that this stuff is a panacea, a cure-all for human ills? No, I'm not. Here's what I am saying. If you live in a country where there's public sanitation, if you live in a country where there is clean water, if you live in a country where there is ample food all of the time, your health will increase and your lifespan will increase. Well, guess what? If you stop eating food that's hurting the body and nutrify your body every day with absorbable medical nutrition, the 90 essential nutrients you need appropriate for your body weight, Educate yourself about what antioxidants are and shoot for 50,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. Your health will improve dramatically. Period. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. The medical industry should embrace what Dr. Wallach and I are saying with open arms. It should embrace what Dr. Wallach and I are saying with open arms because we hold the key not only to health uh, recovery but also to wealth recovery. Because there's a business opportunity here if you want to grab it. And, and also from a social perspective, you know how much money we would save if all of a sudden there was no more type 2 diabetes? You know how much money we would save yearly? We could, uh, we could uh, balance the federal budget in the United States with the money we would save from the not having to treat type 2 diabetes if everybody in the world or everybody in the US got on board with medical nutrition to support and promote healthy blood sugar levels <laughs> I mean the only people who don't want us to succeed are the pharmaceutical industry those people don't want us to succeed because when we succeed they don't have any more clients those are the only people if you're a medical professional, you should have open ears to what we have to say. And you should apply what we have to say. Because we all smoke the same pipe. It's medical education, scientific facts. 
You're welcome to your own opinion. You're not welcome to your own set of facts. Why don't you man up for once, be the physician that you thought you'd be when you entered medical school, and check out what we do instead of giving us crap about it. For goodness sake. Let's go to Houston, where they don't take crap from nobody, no how, nowhere, no when, and talk to Lad. Hey, Lad, what's up? Thanks for the phone call. <laughs> Hi, how you doing, Peter Glidden? I'm great. Um, look, I just wanted to give you a call. Uh, I think you know who I am. Um, I'm, I think I'm like the third or fourth person under you. Uh, the person that's directly under me in in, uh, in longevity is Jarmel. And you had been the personal help for me because I had to turn to you when I had my heart condition that I suffered with from last August, if you remember. I do. And. Yeah. And you gave me uh, Calcarea Carbonica to take for a couple of weeks, and that worked out for a little bit for my heart. And I said I wanted to go see a doctor, and I said, do you think a chiropractor would be the best way to go? And he said, absolutely. And so I went to go see a really good high-end. This woman is just phenomenal. And uh, she also, too, told me what you told me on two separate conversations, not one hand knowing what the other was saying. And you said, you know, I, I can't really diagnose it since you're not in my office. Lad, but I can tell you, uh, I think you're probably calcium deficient. I think that's what you're really suffering from. And then I talked to her, and she gave me the x-ray, and she told me the same thing. She said, you're calcium deficient, and your bone is degenerating in the center part of your spine where your heart is sending the nerve signals to your heart. This is where you're suffering. So when I talked to you, you told me, you said, okay, here's what you need to take. Uh, you were taking the wrong amount, lad, because you were taking half the amount. What you should be taking uh, is four scoops of BTT and... Uh, Take three scoops of the Oxio effects, not two, but take three. And I've been doing that ever since. I've been taking, since last August till now, I've been taking that amount. Um, and 12 of the Ultimate EFA Pluses a day. Take 12 of the Selenium a day. Take four of the Smart Effects because I have a nocturnal seizure condition. You said that would wipe that out. And it's helped out a ton. I'm not on my medication anymore as a result. And um, I'm also on the Survival Shield. Uh, I'm taking that as well. It's the, the, the nascent iodine. And I wanted to ask you a question about the selenium and iodine thing that you mentioned before. But my main question that I called for today is that, listen to Dr. Wallach a few weeks ago, and he talked about de-stress. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking is because a few weeks ago, I started noticing my pulse raising, my heart, you know, my blood pressure and all that. My heart was racing for a couple of days. So I was getting really concerned. It almost felt like it was the aftermath of the collapse that I had from last year. And I felt kind of, I felt really concerned. And I think what happened was, as, as I was recalling, I think I probably picked up uh, a heavy object. I picked up a 90 pound box. Yeah, exactly person. correct. And, and I, yeah. and I shouldn't have done that. And I think I probably stressed something in my back or I yeah. pinched something or I did something that affected my heart. And I've been slowly working out only like 10 minutes every two, three days. I've been working out using the total gym. It's been working great. But, you know, I said, maybe I should try to de-stress, maybe, because I know when I get stressed <laughs> out, my chest starts to feel this little discomfort. It's not major, but I start feeling it. And when I ease out and I cool down, you know, it gets a little bit better. So I don't know. What's your thought about the de-stress? Do you think I should well, be thinking that or what? Well, that's a, it's a lot of stuff to think about and talk about. First of all, appreciate the testimonial. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, you know, th those never fall on deaf ears. I appreciate it very much. Uh, number two, uh, healing is easy, right? And so you're absolutely correct, right? And we you know which was so my theory was vindicated by the chiropractor that the reason that you were having heart issues was not because there was anything wrong with your heart, but because the nerves coming out of your back that go to your heart were being funkified by the dis-ease that was present in your um, vertebrae in your back and the intervertebral discs, right? So so that I got to tell you <clears throat> liver is a rapid thing and an easy thing to heal because there's a massive amount of blood flow to the liver. I've seen liver completely regrow itself in 9 months. It completely regrew itself 9 months. Um you know, bones have a lot of blood supply to them. It's relatively easy to get a bone, a ligament, and a tendon um, to uh, bounce back. But the intervertebral discs have really limited blood supply. 
and the intervertebral disc is amongst the slowest tissues in the body, in my clinical experience, to get to come around. It takes years to get an intervertebral disc back into a state of optimal health. Years, right? So mm-hmm. the intervertebral disc is funky, and then, you know, you you get on board with the program, and you're good with the program, and you're learning about the program, and the program's working, and you're excited, and you start to ease out of your acute symptoms, you know, and life is good. And then you lift something too heavy, and that puts stress right back there on the back, physical stress right there on the disc and on the nerve, and then you're back in the weeds again. This happens all the time with people with this condition, all the time. Uh, so, you know, and it's a, it's a real tricky thing, man, because... We don't really have any radar, right, as to how healthy the intervertebral disc is or how unhealthy the intervertebral disc is. And the funny thing about it is, lad, that, you know, if you, um, you know, if you hit yourself in the hand with a hammer, you're nailing in a nail in the wall and you slip and you slam your finger, that's a one-time stress to the finger. But that finger can be black and blue for three weeks, right? I mean, a one-time stress, boom. And then it takes the body uh, three weeks to make it all better and to make it go away. So the same thing happens here with the nerves coming out of the spinal cord, you know, when they're stressed by, you know, lifting too heavy an object or in your case, right, or or whatever else somebody does. So really, I think the only thing that you need to do here is to maintain the discipline with the glucogel and the calcium. And also, it may be prudent, and you, you seem just the right fella for this job it may be prudent i've seen on um you know i travel a lot and they have those uh, sky mall catalogs where they sell all kinds of stuff right i've seen pads infrared heating pads infrared heating pads that you can lie on um which uh uh will um heat you know the part of your body that's lying on it so i would get an infrared heating pad I would lie on it a couple times a day. You may even want to lie on it at night because when you apply local heat to your back, Mm -hmm. that's going to increase the blood flow to your back and increase blood flow to the back, in your case, would do nothing but speed up the resolution of the program. Now, when we talk about stress, I mean, you know, life is a great big bowl of stress, right? And there's all kinds. There's emotional stress, weather, aging, you know, uh, financial stress, political stress. I mean, there's, you know, lions and tigers and bears and virus and bacteria. There's all kinds of stress, man. But the thing about stress is how well adapted or how uh, how is the body able to handle that stress or whatever it is. So one of the first things that happens when the body is experiencing emotional stress is it burns through B vitamins. It burns right through B vitamins. So, you know, if like students are up against an exam or people are going through a divorce or, you know, people are planning for a wedding and they're all stressed out of their minds for whatever reason, emotionally, that's a good time to supplement with the de-stress because the de-stress is a lot of B vitamins, extra B vitamins. In your case, given your history, You know, it's physical stress, and so really I wouldn't worry about the de-stress for you, but I would up the ante with the the glucogel and the calcium for the intervertebral discs. And you may also want to, for, you know, a week or so, liberally apply topically the CM cream to that part of your back where the disc is problematic because the CM cream will help your body to knock down the inflammation that happened when you lifted that weight too heavy. That's all that I would do. You know, it never hurts to bring extra circulation to a part of the body that we're trying to support and promote. That's how I would handle that, man. Um, You know, just one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time, and all of a sudden, everything's good. Appreciate you very much. Stick around, folks. John from New York is up next. Because I'm teaching like a madman. I'm teaching like a house on fire here. Listen, uh, we have a chat room, right? We have a live video stream. Uh, Let me see how many people are in the chat room now. There are 62 people from all around the world. Raquel has a question. 
Uh, Raquel says, Doc, I have a ganglion cyst on my right wrist. I've had pain in my hips on and off, but not every day. I notice it more before my menstrual cycle. I'm perimenopausal. I want to start working out with weights and cardio. I'm 130. What do I need? Well, that's a good question. So from our point of view, you know, why does uh, someone develop cysts anywhere on the body? It's usually from undernutrification and too much friction, right? Same reason you develop a blister, right, on the ex- on the uh, on the ex- on your external skin. Not enough nutrition, too much friction. Well, kind of the same thing inside the body. So the recommendation here at 130 pounds to give your body a leg up, so to speak, would be per month, one healthy start pack 2.0 liquid. One healthy start pack 2.0 liquid. Three ultimate selenium. Three ultimate selenium. One bottle of plant-derived minerals. One bottle of plant-derived minerals, uh, and one Cal toddy per month, one Cal toddy per month. Now, if you or anyone that you know, uh, because of perimenopause, experiences hot flushes, then you don't need to experience hot flushes. If that happens, you need to get on board for a month or so uh, the Woman's Hormone Balancer, Longevity's awesome product, Woman's Hormone Balancer, now, all of this, of course, is beneath the umbrella of, and by the way, you don't have hot flushes, you don't need to do that. Uh, and all of this is underneath the umbrella of eliminate the 10 bad foods and eat a diet that's high in cholesterol and don't be afraid of salt. Okay, do not be afraid of salt. Eat a diet high in cholesterol, eliminate the 10 bad foods. You are going to be, uh, you know, a, a Viking warrioress before you know it let's go to new york and see what john's up to hey john thanks for waiting you are live uh good afternoon how are you doc i'm great john what's cracking great i'm uh 67 years old 300 pounds i am a uh, type 2 diabetic i'm new to first time listening to your show i'm new to the product i've got um Diabetic neuropathy, um, um, severe constipation, and uh, severe diverticulitis. Yeah, so how's Western medicine working for you, man? It's killing me, Doc. Killing me. <laughs> I know. I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but it's it's comical after a point, right? I mean, this is what we pay hard-earned money for medical insurance premiums to get access to medicine that delivers no results and that, you know, revels in its own mediocrity. Oh, they'll tell you, John, you know, you've got you've got the fat gene. You're overweight because you're lazy. You're overweight because, you know, your stomach's too big. I know what we need to do, John. Let's cut your stomach out. Oh, you don't want to do that? Well, let's just tie a belt around it and squeeze the crap out of it. That's called a gastric bypass surgery. Oh, you have type 2 diabetes. Oh, I'm sorry. You have the type 2 diabetes gene. What's that you say, doctor? I have the type 2 diabetes gene. Well, answer me this question. If I can manage my blood sugars with diet, how is it genetic? Oh, well, huff and puff, says Dr. Huff and Puff. I have no idea. Just trust the doctor, John. Just trust the doctor. It's all genetic. Just trust what I say. You need to take your Humalog. You need to take your insulin. You need to, you know, I don't know what you need to do. You need to go outside and walk around in a circle three times under a full moon while you're wearing a bathing suit. That'll cure it. That's what's going to do it. Oh, and don't forget your insulin. Don't forget your insulin. You need to take more insulin. Oh, and by the way, I need to see you back here in the office every three weeks. I'll say, I'll have my secretary, I'll have my nurse set up an appointment for you every three weeks huff and puff huff and puff huff and puff that'll be three thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars please will that be cash or credit it's nuts for goodness sake i don't know i don't know why there isn't a freaking revolution here in this country because people have been played by an inferior out-of-date medical system and and, you know enough is enough man Hey, but look, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Don't worry. I just needed to get that out of my system. Um, I appreciate your uh, letting me do that. We're up against a hard break here in uh, 48 seconds. So on the other side of the commercial break, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. First thing, though, I'm going to lead up to, John, you need to eliminate 10 foods that are killing you. I call that the 10 bad foods. You can get that list for free on my website, drglidden.com. 
So go to drglidden.com, find the 10 bad foods list, eliminate them immediately from your diet, and then, you know, that's a really good start. You stick around, though, John. I'll be right back after these words. Sing it with me. I know you want to. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go back to New York and dial John in. All right, John, 67 years old, type 2 diabetes, 300 pounds, diverticulitis. You're going downhill quick, brother, uh, for nothing other than lack of information, right? So here's our basic deal, right? Number one, everybody eliminates the 10 bad foods. No. Okay, Doc, can I make one quick statement? Shoot. I've, I have started with the Healthy Start Pack and with the Tangy Tangerine. When I take that, my throat sort of closes up and my tongue turns white. Yeah, okay. So you're taking too strong of a dose too quickly. Now, okay. All right. So, you know, it's kind of like, um, well, I don't really know what a good metaphor would be, but, you know, this is one of the reasons why when, you know, uh, I was uh, in college and we were prone to drink too much alcohol, you know, there's a difference between throwing down a shot of tequila and, you know, just sipping it slowly over the course of the night, right? I mean, you throw down the shot of tequila and you're going to be out like a light. But if you sip from it slowly, you know, it's it's less of a problem, right? So it's kind of the same thing with these nutritional supplements, especially because they're so concentrated and so um, potent. I mean, this is... This is these are the most concentrated nutritional supplements, most effective nutritional supplements money can buy, in my opinion. But there's a way to throw them into your body that's going to cause trouble, and there's a way to throw them into your body that's going to be really kind of nice and easy breezy, lemon squeezy. So, but there's a couple things to understand here, man. Number one, we need the appropriate healthy pack for the appropriate condition, right? So because of your pre-existing health conditions, you are a candidate not for the healthy start pack, but for the healthy blood sugar pack. You are a candidate for the healthy blood sugar pack. Now, we dose it based upon body weight. So in a perfect world, you would get three healthy blood sugar packs a month. It's one healthy, one healthy pack per 100 pounds per month. So in a perfect world, you are a candidate for three healthy blood sugar packs a month. Now, if you can't afford that, do two healthy blood sugar packs a month. If you can't afford that, do one healthy blood sugar pack a month. But either way, you must eliminate the 10 bad foods. You have to do that. Now, here's how we dose it. I'm going to tell you how to dose it. And by the way, I've done an entire 60-minute webinar that walks people through how to take this stuff appropriately. It's called Optimizing the Absorption of Your Supplements. It's available on my website for Dr. Glidden Insiders. To become an insider, it's a 20 buck a month subscription. You can cancel any time. I would encourage you to do that. But, you know, I like to give away as much free information as I can also. So I'm going to take time here right now because my heart goes out to you to walk you through specifically how to take this stuff. So here's the deal. With the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the recommendation is two scoops, two level scoops per 100 pounds per day. So in a perfect world, you would be doing six level scoops a day. Now, the best way to do that is to put two level scoops in 16 ounces of water two level scoops of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine in 16 ounces of water and drink that slowly over the course of one or two hours. All right? So now in a perfect world, you would need to do that three times a day. Two scoops in 16 ounces in the morning, two scoops in 16 ounces in the afternoon, two scoops in 16 ounces in the evening. But whatever you can afford, man, is whatever you can afford, and that's what you should do. But the dosage schedule remains the same. Two level scoops in 16 ounces of water per 100 pounds of body weight per day. And, you know, take one or two hours to drink that down. No harm, no foul. 
Now, the second part of the healthy blood sugar pack is uh, essential fatty acids, EFA fish capsules. The recommendation there is if you have one bottle of EFAs, uh, it's three capsules a day. If you have two bottles, it's three capsules twice a day. If you have three bottles, it's three capsules three times a day. Three bottles would be your optimal dose, but if you can't do that, get two. If you can't do that, get one, right? So the minim minimally, you're going to be taking three of those fish oils a day, and you must take those with food. You must take those with food. Otherwise, you'll be burping up fish oil all day long. So, you know, three with breakfast, three with lunch, three with dinner, that would be perfect. Uh, the third thing in the healthy blood sugar pack is the sweeties. And the sweeties is really important for you. The sweeties is really important for you. And we dose the sweeties at four capsules per 100 pounds per day. That's four capsules per bottle per day. It's one bottle per 100 pounds per day. Now, if you have all three bottles because you're getting all three healthy packs, that's awesome. That means you would do four capsules three times a day. If you just have one bottle, you do, you know, two capsules twice a day, right? Four capsules once a day. But you want to take the sweeties in between meals. You want to take the sweeties between meals. So if you have one bottle of the sweeties, it's four capsules a day. If you have two bottles, it's four caps twice a day. If you have three bottles, it's four caps three times a day between meals for the sweeties. And the last thing here is the Beyond Osteo FX. Now, they sell the Beyond Osteo FX in a powder. They also sell the Beyond Osteo FX in a liquid. If I were you, I'd get it in the liquid. And the liquid dose is one ounce of the Beyond Osteo FX per 100 pounds per day. So if you have one bottle, you take one ounce a day. If you have two bottles, one ounce twice a day. If you have three bottles, it's one ounce three times a day. And I like to mix the Osteo FX with a little bit of liquid. Now, because you're diabetic, uh, I'm not going to recommend you mix it with orange juice. If you're not diabetic, I recommend you take it with orange juice. But because of your blood sugar issue, my recommendation, if you have one bottle of the Beyond Osteo FX a month, it's one ounce in a couple of ounces of water immediately before bed and you want to shoot that down like a shot one ounce in a couple of ounces of water immediately before bed if you're taking more than one ounce a day you take one ounce immediately before bed and then you know one ounce in the morning and then one ounce in the afternoon sometime and if you want to you can mix the liquid calcium with the beyond tangy tangerine no harm and no foul you can do that but I really like to have people take one ounce standalone of the liquid calcium immediately before bed. And that's how you do it. Now, the only other thing you need to do is measure your blood sugar the way that your doctor told you to. Because it's only a matter of time on this program until your blood sugars start to come down. And when your blood sugars start to come down, you're going to need to adjust your medication appropriately. And, you know, if they didn't tell you how to do that, then you go to your pharmacist, and your pharmacist will tell you how to do that. But you need to be tracking your blood sugar numbers every day, you know, the way that they told you to. And when you start to see a positive improvement in the blood sugar numbers, and I've seen that in as little as four days, man. I've seen blood sugar numbers plummet in four days. I mean, I've seen them plummet. What would be a good number? Well, they're going to tell you what, you know, they should have told you what good numbers are, you know, you know, based upon your situation and the machine that they gave you to read your numbers. Um, so they should have told you that. But but you, you're taking your blood sugar numbers now every day? Yes, I am. All right, great. So when you see the numbers improve, which will mean the numbers will get lower, when your daily numbers start to decrease, then you need to consult your, you know, your doctor or your pharmacist and say, hey, look, this is what my blood sugar numbers are now. What do I do with my meds? And they should have told you that up front, but oftentimes they're the ones that are lazy. They can't be, you know, they can't be put upon to do that. 
which is why they should all be, you know, uh, banished to a desert island inhabited by rabid dogs, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but in any event, you need to just be mindful of your blood sugar numbers, and as they start to improve, then you adjust your medications downward with supervision until you don't need them anymore. And then stick it in your MD's face. No kidding. You're also going to lose weight on this program. You're going to lose weight automatically. Because on this program, when you eliminate the 10 bad foods and fill your body's nutrient tank up, you're going to crave less calories. You're going to go a whole day without eating, and you're not even going to recognize it. You're going to start losing weight like a freaking champion. So be, be advised, John, your life is about to take a giant change in the right direction. I've been waiting 67 years for this. <laughs> How'd you hear about us, man? I, through a, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, told me about the product, sent me the product, told me I had to take it, and then he called me today and told me to make sure I called in and had a conversation with you. Yes. Well, that's a friend for life, man. You want to hold on to that friend uh, through thick and thin, no kidding. And look, remember, John, here's the deal, you know, you know, you're from New York, man. I'm from Boston. I, I love people in this part of the country because it's like no nonsense, no BS, especially New York. So I'm not blowing any smoke here. This is as real as it gets. When you eliminate the 10 bad foods and take this stuff appropriately, you're going to start to experience positive change, and it's going to happen rapidly. So, right, the proof of the puddings in the eating Right. Pay attention not only to your blood sugars, right, but also to, you know, your mood, your energy, your appetite, your sleep, your digestion, constipation, the whole schmear, man, because this really isn't a, a blood sugar program. This really isn't an obesity or a constipation program. This is a John from New York program. And we expect to see positive results across the board. So, And, you know, it would be helpful for me and also my listening audience if you would be kind enough to call us back regularly and give us a report. I mean, I, you know, okay, I want to, well. good or bad, man, I want to know what's happening here. We don't screen calls. We don't do any of that. We just take it. We shoot from the hip and we take it like it is. I would look forward to regular updates from you, John, and I appreciate your trust. Uh, now go out there and get your health back, man, because God only knows you deserve it. This is it, folks. I mean, what the heck, right? John's in the weeds, man, and it ain't his fault. He's been paying his medical insurance premiums. He's been being a good man, right? He's been doing everything the doctor told him, and look what happens. He's got chronic constipation. He's got diverticulitis. He's uh, 200 pounds, well, 150 pounds overweight, let's say, at least. And he's got type 2 diabetes. Now he's got peripheral neuropathy. You think he's going to get better or you think he's going to get worse under conventional medical care? Guess what? He's going to get worse. And this from the United States of America, the best medical system money has to buy, baloney. Leading cause of death in the United States, MD-directed medical treatments. Leading cause of bankruptcy, MD-directed medical treatments. When it comes to chronic disease, if you do not fire your MD, you are going to be in a world of hurt. Give your body its due and let your body show you what it can do. I'm Dr. Glidden. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody, and Dr. Peter Glidden finishing up today's show. Uh, we're having uh, technical issues here at the studio, and I can't take any more calls, uh, but we do have an active chat room here on the live video stream. Uh, currently, there are 56 people from all over the world in attendance. I'd like to read you a comment from one of the people uh, in the chat room, Erica. By the way, you can check out the live video stream. It's free. The Dr. Glidden Show TV. Erica has just a comment. Doc, she said, I said yesterday that we have to yank our authority out of the MD's hands and slap them around before something changes. Well, my son died due to insufficient care by the MD. I lodged a complaint with the College of Surgeons and Physicians in Ontario, and after two years of investigation, they said the doctor did not do anything wrong. 
Several law firms did not want my case. They said their insurance lawyers will shred us up in court. They're like piranha. Even though my case was accepted in a class action lawsuit against the drug manufacturer, their insurance company lawyers act on the physician's behalf and do not look out for the patient, even though they advertise as such. It will take an entire generation for patients to take back our own health from the physician's grip, one patient at a time. The awakening takes time. Well, Erica, I couldn't agree more. My heart goes out to you and everybody else suffering uh, needlessly. So, right, there's a couple things that we point out here and that we bring to the table. Number one, when it comes to chronic disease, the philosophy and the methodology of treatment that your MD is trained in is completely wrong. It's, it's wrong. It's It's wrong. There's not even one thing that's right about it. They're the wrong dog for the hunt, period. Number two, because of the medical monopoly that exists in the not-so-free world, we are at, at a disadvantage here as consumers. We're at a disadvantage. So the best thing to do really here is to make your body so healthy that you don't need the care of the MD, unless, of course, heaven forbid, you know, you're in, type of, you're in some type of traumatic accident, an automobile accident or, you know, a sniper injury or something if you're in the armed forces, right? But really, um, it's situations like Erica's that really drive me to the mat here. Um, take it to the streets and get up on as high a hill as is possible and shout to the world, you need 90 essential nutrients. You need 90 essential nutrients. You need them. You can't get them from food. If you don't have them, it's only a matter of time until something breaks. So rather than keeping your fingers crossed and buying medical insurance premiums that gives you access to this type of medical nonsense, it's smarter, don't you think, to give your body the right stuff? I mean, what does medical insurance give you? Does it give your body nutrition? No. It gives you access to medical mediocrity. What the heck? I mean, you know, we need to start taking responsibility here for our own lives, responsibility for our own health. So, folks, if you like what I'm talking about, if it resonates with you, if you see the wisdom, in science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. If you want to learn more, get with the person who told you about this radio show because we exist as a network, a united network of individual business owners all around the world, Longevity Nation, Longevity Business Associates all around the world are here to help you. We stand united. We stand as one body of human beings, supporting each other, holding each other up all around the world, promoting the simple truths of Dr. Wallach's message of health recovery through science-based, clinically verified nutrition. So get with the person that told you about this radio program. Uh, call the radio station that's hosting this program. Give them a call. They have a number set up. They advertise for it during the commercial breaks. Give them a call. Uh, give the person that introduced you to Longevity a call. And if you found me through your own devices, uh, give my Longevity group a call. That's 855-347-3696. Go to my website drglidden.com click on the join team glidden button get in touch with your longevity representative get your health back let them show you the way into the undiscovered country of medical nutrition i'm dr peter glidden i appreciate your support god willing in the creek don't rise we're doing it uh, all over again tonight eight o'clock central time for dr glidden insiders and their guests and tomorrow 3 p.m. Central, right back here on the radio waves. Till then, live long and prosper. Dr. Glidden, over and out.